Hi, good morning, everyone. Yeah, I'm, I'm Oliver Gao. I'm the director of Cornell System Engineering Program. I have been very fortunate to conduct this, what I call system conversations with our prestigious speakers uh, that we invite to Cornell to share with us, you know, their views, their research, and also, uh, you know, their thoughts about the future. So today, I'm very delighted to have Dr. Sijiao Zhou Qing, who is a fellow of the U.S. National Academy of Inventors, the International Federation of Automatic Control, AICHT, and IEEE. His research interests include data analytics, machine learning, process monitoring, model predict control, system identification, smart manufacturing, energy efficient systems, as well as predictive maintenance. So, uh, you know, he's actually currently the chair professor, dean of the School of Data Science and the director of Hong Kong Institute for Data Science at the City University of Hong Kong. Of course, before that, you know, he has a wonderful career uh, being the floor professor at uh, USC. And also before that, uh, being the professor at the University of Texas at Austin. And you cannot believe And before that, he was actually a principal engineer at Emerson Process Management, apparently. So Joe has spanned from the industry to the academics, and also he has multi-institutional uh, experience. He has, you know, uh, he has garnered numerous awards, including, you know, a career awards and the most Grumman Best Teaching Award, just to name a few. So he is a very accomplished scholar with 400 papers published, of course, with huge citations. And um, in the end, uh, before I finish this introduction, I do uh, feel honored to be connected to Dr. Chin. You know, he, uh, he got his bachelor's and master's degree in automatic control from Tsinghua University in Beijing, China. And, uh, and he got his PhD in chemical engineering from University of Maryland. Joe, I promise, you know, I try to pick all the highlights uh, and I want, to, I want it to be brief, but, uh, you know, look at that and look at all those achievements. Um, it's definitely uh, very systems uh, in nature of all your work and all your um, achievements. So before we dive into you know, the details of the data science, which now, you know, you are passionate about, before diving into that, I believe, including myself, we want to know more about you. You know, how did you do all that and how did your career evolve and your views and your thoughts uh, grow through all, it's very for you at this stage, you know, looking back and looking forward. Please satisfy our curiosity about you. Mm. Yeah, thanks Oliver first uh, for the invitation to give a seminar at Cornell uh, in the systems area. And also, thanks for the nice introduction. Uh, really, it's it's, uh, it's it'd be nicer to be able to visit uh, Cornell in person. But I was fortunate; uh, I visited uh, your campus, beautiful campus, a couple of times. Uh, that's almost uh, seven years ago. Uh, so, so time flies. Uh, you should play back again. In the, in the <laughs> yeah, near yeah, yeah. Looking, looking <laughs> yeah. forward to that. Okay. So, so regarding my uh, really uh, uh, professional career around. Uh, really systems and uh, systems and control, maybe more uh, more specifically. Yeah, it, it, it has been a long journey now looking back. It's, uh, it's uh, frightening to mention this, that I, I have been uh, either studying or working in this area for over 40 years. <laughs> yeah, since, <laughs> since 19... It doesn't look like, it doesn't look like from your appearance. <laughs> yeah, since 1979, I was uh, fortunate to get into Tsinghua University. And that's also your alma mater. Uh, you know, that's uh, uh, highly competitive, but uh, I was able to uh, somehow uh, go into the Department of Automation at Tsinghua University. Uh, and automation it's really uh, very obvious that the systems is a central uh, central thing. Okay, being be, it's either engineering systems or, or maybe other other systems or for uh, manufacturing and for chemical production or so. Uh, those are all all systems oriented uh, disciplines. Uh, so I was able to get uh, early education in the. Uh, systems domain, linear systems, uh, and transfer functions, and 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 uh, other things like uh, optimization, and even 
and system identification. Uh, that's, that's a term that people who work in the control area know. It's really a way to use data to sort of reverse engineer uh, the system models. Okay, it's called system identification. So, so really that, that's uh, my education background. And, and when I decided to uh, go to the US for my PhD uh, work, uh, I decided to go to uh, a chemical engineering de department at uh, Maryland. Uh, that was also because uh, of uh, some of the uh, new things that happened that was happening in uh, chemical engineering. Uh, many now it's called the uh, model predictive control. But back then that term was not formed. There, it was <laughs> called some other names. Okay, so I was, I was, I was attracted by the uh, model predictive control going to Maryland. Uh, but somehow, you know, this is really, there's nothing you could plan uh, very precisely, but I was assigned to work on neural networks <laughs> for my PhD thesis, okay? Uh, and uh, I, I was also, uh, you know, uh, I was realizing that uh, neural networks at that time had uh, uh, some drawbacks, uh, in particular with, uh, you know, data collinearity and uh, generalization issues, okay? Uh, and which is still of a concern now uh, for, for machine learning. But my dissertation was on uh, using multi multi-dimensional uh, multivariate statistics uh, to help uh, neural networks uh, uh, training, so to avoid those uh, those potential drawbacks. Uh, and then, uh, uh, then you know, again, I want to answer your question about uh, how I sort of stayed on the systems focus. So when I graduated in, in 1992. Uh, from Maryland, it was a very difficult time to find jobs. But uh, because I somehow worked in neural networks, uh, I, I was hired by Emerson, and they wanted to develop uh, products uh, using machine learning. Uh, back then, that's uh, you were years ago. you were way ahead of the curve. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, thirty years ago. Okay, yeah. so so I was hired. I was very fortunate to be to get a job. Uh, you know, that's a difficult time. And then I did really uh, develop a, a neural network uh, software package uh, for control systems, uh, uh, you know, uh, predictions. Okay, uh, these are predicting uh, difficult to measure quantities, especially uh, for air emissions. It starts to be a problem back then. Uh, EPA was requiring a lot of uh, furnaces or boilers to 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 install hardware sensors, but it's. Uh, we, we do a neural network replacement uh, or substitute. Yeah, uh, that's, so that, uh, uh, yeah, that I can, that's, that's, you know, because you, that reminded me because you know, back in the 1970s, that's exactly what, that was exactly when the Clean Air Act, right, it was issued. Uh, yeah. yeah, heading back to you. Yes, yes, it is. Uh, we were uh, mostly predicting NOx uh, from, uh, from boilers or, or furnaces. Uh, but uh, my heart was, uh, uh, always on the academic side, uh, and uh, you know, I was uh, get, getting enough uh, uh, industrial experience, so I know uh, how these technologies could help them. So I wanted to uh, develop uh, more into the into my academic curiosity. Okay, mm -hmm. so I, I I had the opportunity to join uh, University of Texas at Austin uh, after three years at uh, Emerson. Uh, so then uh, all my academic life started from, uh, from then. Uh, okay, so, so the, the focus uh, uh, somehow has been either on predictive control or on some data-driven approaches uh, and for fault detection and monitoring and so on. Uh, even though my uh, system background uh, changed from uh, chemical systems to uh, semiconductor manufacturing, Mm -hmm. In Austin, it was a, it's, a, it's a big hub for semiconductor manufacturing. And then when I moved to the University of Southern California in 2007, I was able to move into energy areas. Okay, uh, there are some renewables and uh, even traditional uh, oil field, uh, there were digitization going on uh, in this uh, oil field, uh, what we call upstream. Uh, so again, the, the whole idea is uh, all I, the problems I've been dealing with are really uh, systems problems. Uh, so, so, so that's, uh, uh, I think in my talk later today, I will uh, still bring the, the knob, uh, touch the knob on systems and data together. Yeah. 
That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Thank you, Joe. Um, of course, you know, you know, of course, now, um, you know, you are the dean of the School of Data Science and look at the background you know, behind you. You know, I, can, I cannot think of anybody else that can be better for me to ask questions about data science, uh, right? That's, that's, and actually, you know, when you, were, when you were introducing your earlier career and you mentioned like your PFT work, you know, using neural networks, uh, as, I, as I kind of inserted that you were really, you know, way ahead of the curve, uh, right? Doing all these things while I can see that the different applications varied across time. But I, I, I can see this vertical longitudinal line you know, cutting through all those different applications you know, in the different period of your career, like data science, right? So, um, which is you know, now very hot. I cannot help asking you, so what is exactly data science? Uh, I think you know, probably, you know, especially, mm -hmm. I saw that you know, recently you know, some of your work has been cited um, by the Harvard Data Science Review, um, and then, you know, you represent some very important uh, school of thinking, right, for data science. So, uh, you know, as someone, you know, by the way, you know, I, 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 you know, I did get a, you know, master's degree in statistics, but I know that it's, it's probably, you know, different from now what people call data science. So, yeah, what is data science? And, uh, uh, especially, uh, kind of, you know, for, for, for you know, for, for a lot of people, you know, nowadays, uh, right? So, what do you see as a key difference? Because somehow many people confuse data science with statistics or computational statistics. So, yeah, um, anything you want to talk about data science, please. Well, very good. Yeah, I think this is a this has been a question. Uh, you know, uh, before I decided to accept uh, the deanship at uh, City University, as I was asked to be the inaugural, inaugural dean, and I had to think about what is data science, okay? Uh, so I visited uh, quite a few U.S. Uh, uh, universities uh, like uh, MIT and Harvard uh, and so on. So, so I was trying to also uh, form some, some good understanding in my own uh, view uh, about what should be uh, the future of data science and, and even what it is, as, as you're asking. Uh, so now I, I think I pretty much have, uh, have some of uh, my own uh, views and vision on, on data science. Uh, I, I think it, it is and it, it is evolving as well, a discipline. Uh, it's, it is a discipline. However, this discipline is, uh, is more uh, of uh, an evolving stage than a steady state. Uh, so what, what it is, is yet to be really uh, crystallized over time. Uh, but you know, it's very clear now uh, that uh, uh, to me, data science is an applied science. Okay, so it's, it, it is an applied science. Uh, so definitely it has to borrow uh, theory and principles from uh, statistics. Uh, so statistics is, is one foundation for data science. Uh, and however, we have uh, statistics departments for over hundred years. Uh, you know, it was not called data science, okay, for, for some reasons, uh, but uh, now we know that data science uh, and all big data and other things uh, that's uh, coming in that promoted uh, the awareness of really data its own has a, has its own uh, powerful rule and a source source of uh, knowledge uh, as as a, a discipline. So so this new thing that's coming in uh, brings uh, in another foundation of data science that is computing, and that's really the computing power that sort of uh, untapped uh, the 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 power of data analytics. Uh, okay. You could think about, uh, say, statistics uh, uh, landscape 20 years ago, uh, it's more or less uh, uh, more traditional, right? Uh, there are less discussion about high dimension and, and, uh, and massive size uh, inference, uh, massive data inference and so on. Uh, so now if you look at the statistics literature in the 20, last 20 years, it has changed uh, quite a lot, okay? So really the uh, statistics itself is also evolving because they have the now the computing power and the bigger problems they are facing with. Uh, it's really the 
and then the bigger problems that's uh, that's uh, that looks like statistics okay but but uh, they need to uh, retool their their theory framework to to handle this uh, massive data and uh, and a lot of the issues related to uh, big data uh, so so it's really that these those two are foundations for data science uh, it, there, there are some of our, my colleagues from uh, statistic background. They would try to think maybe uh, statistics is you know uh, is data science, or, or data science is just uh, statistics. Uh, that's something uh, I would say uh, to be argued, uh, because uh, from my view, uh, if data science is an applied science, then it will need. Uh, theory from more than one discipline. Yeah. Uh, you will need foundations from more than one discipline. And definitely statistics is one foundation and computing is another. And uh, my view, and this is also shared by a, a few people I know, uh, there will be a third foundation for data science uh, that is uh, systems. Uh, to me, I, I'm more uh, related to dynamic systems, but it doesn't have to be dynamic systems, okay? It can be other uh, systems principles uh, or systems uh, approach to, uh, to the engineering uh, systems uh, or, or natural systems. Uh, so, so I think uh, uh, nearly all the data we, we are dealing with, uh, they are coming from some systems either natural or, or, or engineering systems, okay? And so therefore, when one analyzes uh, data from those systems, you need to know the systems. And there, there's domain, domain knowledge, yeah. domain knowledge one has to know. Otherwise, uh, you could uh, arrive at arbitrary uh, uh, conclusions and without interpretation, okay? Even, it will be even, hard, even hard to interpret uh, anything you get if you don't have the domain knowledge of the systems. So, so my, my view uh, to this question is uh, one, data science uh, is a discipline. However, it's not uh, going to be clearly defined now. Uh, it has uh, three foundations. Uh, I would argue one is uh, statistics, two is uh, uh, computing, okay. Third one is the systems view or systems principles, okay. And, and then uh, I think it's healthy to uh, maintain this definition to be open. Uh, the definition of uh, data science to be open. And uh, that's really the power of this uh, new discipline. We don't want to make it well-defined now. Uh, we're, we're not able to do it uh, first, okay? I, I think there is still a lot of years to grow uh, this discipline before we say, okay, yeah, uh, that's, uh, that there will be a lot of uh, uh, standard textbooks on data science uh, as a discipline. Okay, this is the curricula you follow, you'll get data scientist trend. Uh, however, we're, we're, we're not at that stage. We're right now at the early stage of, of this uh, discipline development. So I would also uh, use uh, the analogy of uh, uh, computer science back uh, maybe uh, 40 years ago or, or 50 years ago. It was also in the early development, okay? And now the computer science is still in its uh, development, but we know what it is, uh, okay? So, so I think uh, uh, I'm fortunate uh, to be able to uh, lead uh, this school of data science at CTU so we can uh, realize uh, these uh, ideas. Uh, so we have uh, two undergraduate degrees here. One is a data science and this is more general. Uh, okay, another degree as a bachelor degree is actually in, and this is what you will like. It's in data and systems engineering. Wonderful. So we have we have definitely the systems uh, okay. component in our undergraduate education. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Joe, thank you for sharing your insight. And especially I appreciate because, you know, when, when you answered my question, actually you said that before you took the deanship, actually you gave it a lot of deep thinking to yourself. You were trying to answer to yourself the question, like what data science? Is because you can see that even because you know you are putting the next you know five or ten years of your time, you know into a mission, uh, right? You want to make sure that you are on the right mission, right? So uh, and all the thoughts that you shared with us, uh, I bet you know I believe it was out of your, you know your deep thinking. So uh, of course this question is kind of because it also kind of helped me and maybe you know some people in the society you know can answer because 
given you know all this because there is no signs that it would draw a very clear line from other things. It's you know it's it's evolution rather than all in a sudden revolution, right? So in that sense, I think you made a very good point, and I just want to summarize. You know, one point is you, I think it's a very important point to help people understand data science is it's an applied science, uh, right? Such it's 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 different from like chemistry uh, or or physics. Right, I think that's, that's very important because otherwise for many audience, when, when people think of science, they think of chemistry, physics, mm -hmm. but it's, you know, data, it's more on applied side. And another thing, Joe, I feel you made it, uh, it, toward, it was towards the end of your answer, you know, actually you, you made a very important point. You say that, you know, we have got to keep our view open, you know, for the evolution of data science because, and you, you made a very good kind of you know, an, you know, analogy uh, to computer, how computer science, you know, was developed. I, you know, I, I love it. I, I think I kind of that essentially helped me answer something. You know, before, like I was always thinking, oh, this data science, is this a similar wine in a fancier bottle or <laughs> is a totally new kind of wine? Mm -hmm. uh, right, but I, I feel, I feel you know, your answer helped me kind of, you know, um, like a, you know, relieve you know those doubts. So now, Joe, um, you know, with that, uh, you got people excited about data science, and you talk about what data science is. And then, I cannot help asking, why data science? Why data science now? Because you can see, you know, statistics has been there for more than one hundred years, and why data science did not emerge twenty years ago or fifty years? Ago? Why now? And why? Why data science? Yeah, yeah, that's also something. Uh, you know, it's it's hard to really uh, to sort of uh, uh, go back in the history, right? You, 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 this is like uh, everything happened uh, to our own, uh, you know, self is is a causal system. If we knew what uh, happened uh, thirty years ago, what will happen now? If thirty years ago we knew what will happen now, we'll, we'll do do a much better job. Uh, but uh, uh, I think this is a natural uh, evolvement, evolving of, of things. Uh, I, I would say, uh, based on my own uh, uh, experience uh, in machine learning, let's say, okay, uh, I, I studied uh, neural networks when I was um, doing my PhD work 30 years ago. So, so back then, there was a high interest on neural networks and machine learning, uh, but the, the time was not uh, ready for uh, to take that uh, machine learning scheme, okay? Uh, that, that's, uh, you know, I would say computation was not ready and even other things were not ready. Uh, so so I, I would say 30 years ago, uh, even 35 years ago, um, most of the interest in machine learning, there's of course this, uh, this big thing about uh, to, to have something that's more like a human-like uh, uh, learning system, okay? And that was the ultimate uh, uh, goal, but even though it was not achieved uh, back then. Okay, uh, but uh, but uh, you know, still a lot of the uh, effort or curiosity was an uh, academic uh, effort uh, 35 years ago. Uh, there are some you know commercialization or business uh, things that sort of crystallized, uh, but uh, it's uh, it's really uh, usually limited to. Say fit for neural networks, okay, multi-layer neural networks. All right, uh, not much more. Uh, I think that in the last 20 years, and this run of uh, AI and machine learning, now we, we call the discipline uh, data science, I think it's really different from what happened before, okay? And this time I would say it's applications that lead. Really, you first see the Amazon recommendation system, Amazon recommenders system, okay, for, for you to buy books, right? Yeah, and that's that, right. Yeah. At that time, we, we, 20 years ago, we knew Amazon was doing that, but we didn't know that was data science. So we, we didn't give it a name, but it's, a, it's, a, it's really in part of the data science. And the recommender system was uh, so successful at Amazon. And, uh, and they basically, replaced their human recommendation, uh, rec human like a uh, book writers. They have book uh, 
uh, sort of uh, commentators, okay? Uh, they are write reviews of books uh, to promote book selling uh, before they had the computing, the computer recommender system uh, in place. So they found the computer recommender system is more effective selling their books than the, uh, the human, you know, uh, 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 you know, well-trained professionals to write reviews of books. So that's uh, that's one of the examples. Of course, you you heard the other things like uh, uh, Netflix. Okay, also doing recommender systems of uh, of movies and, and uh, other things. And so this all really turned up to uh, very useful things. Even Google has uh, we know the translator. Google Translator is very helpful and very very mature now. Uh, over over the years, uh, and there, there are other things for uh, you know the uh, the other other things we use uh, even our mobile devices these days uh, they all have to do with some degree of uh, machine learning and data driven uh, solutions. Uh, so I think I think this time uh, it's really driven by the uh, the applications. Uh, of course, the other side of uh, data science is really for. Uh, there's uh, targeted uh, uh, commercials, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, you buy things, uh, this is a, uh, somewhat similar to a recommended system, but maybe more general. They will know what you're searching and, yes. and they will tell you what you should buy. Uh, so uh, so that's, uh, that's certainly has, has a lot of uh, commercial values, okay? And that's how, you know, Facebook and, and uh, even, even Google, <laughs> you know, make a, a big income or revenue. Uh, these days, uh, you know, uh, especially during the pandemic, uh, a lot of activities yes. happen online. Yeah. So, so, so I would say the difference this time is uh, we already are pushed by successful uh, applications of uh, data uh, science or data science techniques. Yeah. I see, I see. Joe, Joe, thank you. I think that you know, actually, you know, this explanation uh, somehow echoed uh, the early point you made that you know, data science is applied science. You can see it's really right. You know, all these applications actually uh, prepared the soil for the data science uh, to grow. And also uh, in those applications, those real world applications, they actually they raise not only the need, but also uh, the research questions that data scientists and scholars uh, you know, can take advantage of or, you know, conquer because otherwise, you know, how can we call you know, science or right? because there is all this need all these problems, they cannot serve, they cannot uh, solve those problems and then they've kind of uh, created uh, or promoted such a, you know, such a discipline, right? So I think, Joe, this is, this is wonderful. Of course, uh, another thing I feel, uh, right, you know, this, it's, any good thing that happened that need the soil and the road to be, to be paved. So probably you know, all the big data that appeared all this year from all these applications. And together, as you mentioned, the computational power uh, that equipped us and, uh, and all in a sudden, everything together in this data science um, comes up. And right? I think that, you know, that's wonderful. So um, with that, uh, while we are both excited about the emergence of such a new discipline, it's back, I think it's, actually, it's good news for engineers. And uh, you and I were both like engineering background, right? We feel, because engineers are most aware problem solvers. So we want to solve problems and now data science, you know, present this more powerful, you know, tool or thinking framework or the way of thinking to help us. So we all get excited about both the power and the, and the promise of the data science. But of course you as a visionary thinker about data science, do you see any challenge? Do you see any ceilings? Do you see any potential problems that could come with data science? So for example, Data science actually is based on one on one prerequisite, the big data. But how do we get data? Big data, getting the data is based upon very wide, generalized surveillance. Right? You survey in the kind you know the, the chemical process, you know, the, the process engineering or a production line, all those things, yes, we can put in a lot of sensors, right? 
Of course, now another big area for data science is really like human behavior, social security, and uh, city management. All these things all in a sudden come to the subject of human beings. And then human beings, either in Hong Kong or in the US, people care a lot about their privacy, but I'm just using this as an example. So my question now coming back, my question is, what do you see as a key challenges or even any possible ceiling, or especially as, you know, as the thinkers ahead of the curve, how should we avoid or how should we cope with that kind of challenge associated with you know, uh, the power of data science? You know, the similar thing, like we have atom bombs, right? If you use it right, you know, no, we have atom mm -hmm. energy. If you use it correctly, that can be, but if you use it in the wrong way, that can be very detrimental. So, mm -hmm. yes, please. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, very, very good. I think you touched on some important uh, things uh, in the education of uh, data science. Uh, you know, I think uh, privacy, uh, uh, you know, that's uh, an ethics uh, around, around data science uh, and equality uh, you know, or, and biasness. Uh, that's all important things for data science to to, to really to find uh, uh, good answers. And we're, we're in the process of uh, doing that. And there are also other challenges beyond this, uh, uh, this kind of societal or ethical challenges. And uh, there are the challenges, as you said, uh, you know, we need this uh, big data source, okay? Uh, we need the data to be there and to be uh, friendly for applying the data science uh, tools. Uh, they may they may have tons of data already there, but they were not collected uh, uh, to satisfy uh, the data science uh, analytics requirements. Uh, and and then uh, there are other things about uh, you know uh, how do do we sort of uh, uh, deploying or putting more sensors? Uh, this is related to the Internet of Things. Okay? Mm -hmm. So how how is that going to help us? And even the wireless communications like 5G or, or, or things like that, uh, will that help us solve this data requirement problem? So, so this is going to be a really, uh, really, a, a, really a platform change or it's, it's going to be a, a new, new way of doing engineering or doing society management uh, and doing transportation, that's one of your areas, okay? Uh, so, so there is going to be some new ways of doing things. Hopefully we will build more uh, smart uh, technologies uh, around uh, the engineering problems and around the societal uh, systems. Uh, therefore, we will make less uh, uh, mistakes, okay? We will avoid bad accidents. Uh, we will uh, also save the environment by uh, efficiently efficiently using our resources uh, like energy and material okay uh, for example we don't want to mass produce too many things that get wasted and there will be more flexible manufacturing uh, going on okay uh, so these are uh, the data source is definitely one challenge uh, but uh, but i would say as 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 the applications of data science are evolving uh, it all uh, grow organically with uh, the available uh, data sources, okay? It will basically reshape how people will install new sensors or Internet of Things and how they are going to be communicated uh, over the network or wireless networks. Uh, and these things will evolve more like evolution. It, it's, it's hard to do it in, in like a, I will switch on to an entire new system and you you understand this with the you know the the the, the, the transportation right? It'd be very hard to change everybody to an electric car now, uh, and with, with uh, autonomous autonomous driving that would be an easy problem, right? You have to deal with the the transition here with the mixed uh, human driving and and, uh, and different kinds of cars uh, driving. Uh, so that's the hardest part. And once everybody is doing the same things, it's actually getting easier but we have to go through this uh, transition phase, uh, okay, before we get to the new phase. And so, so that's, uh, that's again, I think uh, it uh, it's involves infrastructure. The infrastructure is evolving. In some uh, societies, uh, these days, uh, these things evolve faster, okay? Especially in developing countries, 
they didn't have a lot of the existing infrastructure. So they could actually evolve, evolve faster, uh, evolve to newer uh, platform faster. So, so, so then for existing developed uh, environment, uh, one has to you know, really think about uh, what's the best way to integrate uh, this new capability into existing infrastructures. Okay, uh, we have dealt with this uh, by uh, sort of dilemma uh, 20 years ago when we switched from land phone to, to mobile phones. Mm -hmm. You remember how slow it was to switch from land phones to mobile phones. Okay, uh, though that was one thing that uh, you know I I knew it took a long time to to do that. However, uh, the the digital camera uh, was an easier transition, right? Yes. Uh, there are some there are some initial resistance because uh, initially the digital camera was very low quality. People resisted a little bit, but very quickly that was a, a sort of a, a past. Okay, we all like the the convenience of digital camera, and now it's part of the smartphone. So so I think uh, in any time with this kind of uh, uh, sort of a, a breakthrough or, or some disruptive thing uh, in this uh, data science area. I would say it needs to have an evolutionary approach. Uh, it's going to have to build on the existing infrastructure first before it reaches to the ultimate uh, new, new infrastructure. Okay. Uh, and uh, your second part of the question is very important. That is, we have to deal with uh, equality, privacy, ethnic, ethnic, uh, the ethnics, and, uh, uh, ethics, okay, ethics, and, and so on. Uh, so we, we teach actually. Uh, uh, a required course uh, in data science so that's called the, uh, the ethics and, and also the professional side of uh, data science. That's great. Uh, thank you, Joe. And I, I appreciate, especially I think when you, when, you, when you discuss this, actually you mentioned uh, many times the word infrastructure, right? I think that's, that's really a key word, right? The infrastructure, um, it's, you know, it's not only you know the infrastructure for data science, but also you know data science gradually in the future becoming a part of the infrastructure, uh, you know, for the society and for organizations. So that's actually why, uh, you know, Joe, I really appreciate you know your uh, your vision as well as your bravo to take up you know this deanship position because the reason is you are really deep, you know, because you know anything new. Right, it has it's it's facing a lot of opportunities, and in the meantime, and a challenge, and especially for this, and for those challenges, you don't have an answer, right? You don't even you think so hard, and you visit many places, you think so hard, you still don't get a, get an answer. But all you have is really, I think, you know, this this courage, this courage to take on the challenge, and and move forward. Again, coming back to infrastructure, because you know, I'm civil engineer and uh, <laughs> we, we know what infrastructure is. Like for infrastructure, right, it's the roads and the rivers and the bridges. And even for a building, the infrastructure is really the foundation part. So that's why setting the infrastructure right is so critical. So that's also, of course, why, you know, when you think about different political systems, right, the U.S. political mm -hmm, system mm -hmm. versus European political systems, yeah. right, you know, it, 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 it's how, how can people, how all these founding fathers, like, you know, probably in the future, like, you could be viewed as one of the founding fathers about this data science and how the founding fathers can be so intelligent and wise to pinpoint not many, but just those few very key pillars, but that kind of laid the foundation <laughs> for the correct evolution. You, you talk about mm -hmm. evolution. Yes, everything will evolve, but things could evolve in the wrong way. Things could evolve in the right way. How can we increase the chance through this infrastructure so that the system will evolve in the right way? So I think that's actually, I believe that's definitely yeah. that's definitely that's definitely a mission on your shoulder. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, very good question. I I, I would say yes. Uh, you you look back on the technologies. Uh, there were a lot of things that they were based on. They, they form infrastructure, but they have uh, there are competing uh, standards. Okay, they're like they could be equally good, but uh, at the end only one survives. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
uh, you know, that's uh, that happened in, in many of our technology areas. Uh, you know, now we're 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 sort of uh, uh, so getting used to uh, the technology generation update. We update to the next generation, and we tend to forget what we used ten years ago. Uh, do you remember what phone you used ten years ago? Uh, you probably don't, okay? Because no, it has evolved no. <laughs> too much. So maybe you think about BlackBerry or so, but, but <laughs> you know, it's it's just so easy for for us to sometimes uh, see how things are updated uh, so quickly. But in some infrastructure, it takes uh, uh, maybe decades to update. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, and that that's the part we need to think much more carefully. All yes. right, uh, you know, uh, to to really win this uh, this thing. I think in the industrial domain, this is called industry 4.0. Okay, it, it does represent very well about how data science and machine learning would play in this industry 4.0. It is going to happen, uh, but there, then there'll be competing solutions. There'll be competing proposals over time to see you know, what's the ultimate winner. Uh, I think uh, as an academic, uh, researchers uh, as we are, and also we need to work very closely with the uh, industry leaders to, to define the, the correct path, okay? So that uh, we become uh, the proposal or the, the you know, provider of the winning solutions. And that's extremely important. Yeah, I think it, it's, uh, it, it'll have, have a huge impact on the economy. You know, if you become part of the winning solutions uh, and uh, the other side it would be not so not so uh, rosy, okay? Uh, so, so I think how do we uh, get to the right path or to get the, uh, uh, on the path of uh, the successful solutions? Uh, I would say it's, it's definitely requires uh, uh, talents, uh, getting the talented people uh, who really think about uh, the, the basic uh, fundamental questions well, uh, you know, rather than chasing some, some you know, fancy things, I would say we, we would want to really stay on the solid ground. Uh, okay, uh, so, so we will never lose sight uh, in developing these uh, new, newer infrastructures. Uh, so that's, uh, uh, ha having said that, I, I still I maintain this view. I think uh, we can never, we cannot, we should not give up our uh, existing understanding of the physical world, uh, the physical systems, uh, basically what we understand about uh, engineering, we understand about uh, physics and chemistry, and uh, that should be our our founding principles. Uh, but we also uh, uh, can incorporate the power of data. Uh, I think these are the uh, you know two sides of the same coin. Uh, if you just look at one side, it's not the whole picture. There will always be uh, what we know, and there will always be what we don't know. That's the uncertain side, and the uncertain side will be reflected by data. Okay, data will tell us what's uncertain, uh, and the more real timeness you get the data, the better you will, uh, uh, you know, understand the uncertainty and make uh, make the right decisions. Uh, so, so I think uh, timeliness is uh, uh, is one thing of uh, big data. Uh, I think in our future uh, solution, we, we, we certainly realize this, uh, that we need to use uh, both the power of data and the power of uh, uh, physical understanding, okay? Uh, the power of uh, the first principles uh, together. And that's, our, that's going to be a long-term mission for many of us. I think that will put us in the right, uh, uh, you know, position to develop uh, uh, you know, the, the solutions for the next uh, infrastructure. Yeah. Wonderful too. I mean, I, it's kind of this, you know, I think your summary kind of, I think bring us, uh, brings us kind of, I think smoothly to, toward the end uh, of, of this exciting systems conversation. You know, I think actually you know, this, it's very good because I think you mentioned the two things. Um, uh, one thing actually also reminds me, like both you and me, like we, we were, actually you even had better, you know, training in system engineering because you were in automatic control, which, you know, kind of very closely related uh, to system engineering. And actually I, as a civil engineer, transformed like kind of systems person who is interested in systems, but you know, what I learned, what I benefit, what I feel I benefited the most from, you know, uh, being exposed to system engineering 
I feel that as an engineer, through this engineer, now I learn, I learn the most important thing is to first choose to do the right thing and then do it right. So, but most of engineers, we are trained to do the things right. But seldom we thought about, we ask, are we doing the right thing? And I think this kind of system thinking, because I think you being one of the key advocator to, you know, about the system principles to be considered in data science. And of course, your, you know, your system of nature is really not only your early training, but also your like four decades of your, you know, cross-disciplinary, um, you know, work. And also the second point you mentioned about the, you said the key is talents, right? And it, it's, it's attracting talent. Of course, speaking of talents, there's no better talents than future generations, right? right? Yes, we are talented, but we are, right? We will very soon become the past tense. Right, you know, for the future generations and for the future education and for the future systems engineers, as well as data science, scientists or data, you know, uh, data science professionals. So Joe, what would you tell them? Yeah, uh, this is actually something I think about a lot. Uh, for us as educators, I think we have our own uh, ethical sense, which is, uh, we don't want to teach the next generation with obsolete technology. Make mm -hmm. sense? So I, I think it might serve us well, but it will not serve them well. So ethically, uh, we should always teach them what's the future things, okay? Uh, so they can, they can have their jobs uh, for decades. Uh, so uh, so that's, uh, that's why I think data science is in the right place now. Uh, it'll, it'll represent the future. Uh, and what will need uh, the, the new generation of, of talents in the future. Uh, and now, uh, having said that, so we both are uh, sort of uh, trying to do the same things maybe from uh, two different angles. I'm uh, in the School of Data Science. I try to incorporate uh, systems training, okay? And you are leading the systems uh, 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 discipline there at Cornell. I, I suggest that you uh, should probably try to incorporate uh, data, data uh, dimension okay, into the systems. Uh, so therefore, I think overall, again, I, I will try to say systems is, is more on this uh, fundamental side or, or the, the physical side, uh, okay? And then data is more what you, what you see and what you observe and you try to understand exactly what's going on in the systems. Uh, so, so I hope we can, you know, there are our two sides and some, some day later, you know, we can have another sort of a discussion or even, even a, a workshop to, to just to see how these two sides could, uh, you know, work towards uh, one, one, the same integration. Okay, that will be uh, the ultimate uh, uh, solution for us. That's wonderful. Uh, so Joe, I, you know, we are, we are running out of the time, but I wanted to thank you again, especially I understand that we are half a world away and we have a 12 hour you know, time difference. While here, you can see I'm excited, I'm energetic because I'm in the morning time, but Joe, you are already at midnight and you are still so energetic. And um, I really appreciate that. Uh, I want to thank you again. And uh, hopefully, as I said earlier, we can meet in person sometime soon uh, so that we can continue this conversation. And I, I, can, prop I can tell you actually in my note, I wrote down more questions than I was able to raise to you during this limited um, period of time. But thank you again. Okay, thank you, Oliver. This is a very, very pleasant to, to chat with you. Yeah. Right. See you.